Hi, welcome to Meet the Barber, uh, first episode. This is Danny Robinson. Hello. Hello, mate. I've known you for five years now. Five years? Five years. First, first event we did was Crep City, I think, wasn't it? Crep City, five years ago. I uh, contacted great. you after I saw you, saw a lot of the stuff that you've done on social media, and you put out that, that wicked pomp that was done on uh, Abdul's hair. Yeah, yeah, it was five years ago. Uh, you invited me down to Brick Lane. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? That was before all the all the shows uh, being catapulted into the limelight of you know Instagram, social media being on the feds. That was probably the first time I properly demonstrated my work in front of people. Yeah. Um, was yeah down with you at Crep City. It that was, was only. Do you know? Believe it or not, that was only the second event that I'd actually done. I'd done. I started working with Uppercut then. I think I'd done a couple by that point. But this was just the second one. And I did the first one and. Um, I only literally, everyone seems to think that that was, you know, oh, we managed to get that through one thing or another. Do you know, like everyone seems to think that this is like magic ingredient to get all these events. Literally, yeah. that was one of my customers sat in front of me to, to do the first one. And he, he said to me, well, I said to him, what are you doing this weekend as a, a you know, standard bath, barber patter? I said, what are you doing this weekend? And he said, oh, I'm going to sell trainers at Crep City. Well, I've got it coming up or something. I was like, what is that? I have mm. no idea. And he went, oh, I know the guys up there were actually, he was part of House and Garage and he said he was going to go, he was taking DJs and stuff up there. I was like, do you reckon they do a pop-up barbershop? And he went, I can ask. And that's literally- Where it came from. How it started off. And I did the first one, um, had great fun. I can't remember, I think we only took two chairs. And do you know, funny enough, that was the first, I probably spent the most money on that event. Yeah. Because we built this, this uh, setup. It was awesome. It was before the uppercut days because I had 12 seat and stuff on that. And it was a wicked setup, but it was so good that no one got involved. Everyone took pictures of it. Yeah. But no one had a haircut. I think we did, I don't know, two or three haircuts, and one of them was one of the guys that worked with us. Right, that's insane. And then obviously the ones that we did further down the line, it was. Well, the second one, we were like. Smashed. It was, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was so busy. Yeah, it was. It was, yeah, it was. That was a really cool event. That's what opened my eyes to. Barbering's not just about standing behind a chair, cutting hair in a shop. You can literally go so many different angles on it, you yeah. know, with the pop-up shops. Then obviously we did the cruises. Mate, it's just, just do, there is so many angles to cutting hair. It's just, if you want to push yourself or just remain yeah. just in a shop. But the, the, the pop-up shops were almost the beginning, weren't they? Because everyone was doing the pop-ups, was doing these sort of weird and wonderful locations and just realize, like some people are either doing it for notoriety but I, was, I just liked doing these events and going up because it, was, it just broke the norm. And also it was, it was good, quite good to, you know, to get out of the, the shop with a couple of the other guys. They're just experiences, just something, because if you get stand behind a chair for 30 years. Oh mate, it gets boring, it gets really boring. It, gets, it does get boring, it gets, you can't help it, but sometimes you take it for granted, they take you for granted. Mm, there's, of course. there's so much to it, but now the game's changed, gone on. It's like those pop-ups are, you know, you might get the odd one, but everyone's all about doing education shows it's all about of course mate I, I can't believe how quick the momentum of barbering has changed from when me and you first set up five six years ago yeah it's just literally like people like to me barbering was obviously working in a shop yeah. cutting the general public's hair you know you're earning your 400 quid a week or whatever going yeah. home to your family and all of a sudden it just change to the sh like the shows and then these big clipper companies and product brands started to get introduced and snap up all these young barbers mm. and it just snowballed like really fucking quickly it's grown so so much yeah in the early days i was massively naive to the full lot of it oh. I, th I i thought wow these companies are asking to I'd do, I'd do anything for free. Yeah, I would have done. I would have anything. I would have got on my knees for free. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but um, yeah, it just because it was so much. I, I think that when I first started off, you know, it was me and Lacey working in the shop. Yeah. Um, and she did. I, I didn't even knew social media existed. Really, I knew I had a Facebook. I had Facebook. But um, and then she was. I saw her scrolling one day on her, on her phone, and she had to explain to me what she goes. What, what Instagram? I was like, What's when Instagram? When I first heard of Instagram, I thought this surely can't work. You just post pictures, and yeah, that's it. I, I, I didn't get it. I couldn't see the value. No. I was like, is it what Twitter with pictures? I couldn't. I just couldn't figure out how it worked. And then I started posting some pictures, and I always used to use that um, that filter. What was it? The brown and white filter. Not sepia. No. Not sepia, but it was. 
Oh, whatever. Early bird. Right, I remember. Uh, do you remember the early bird? Right, and I, you know, contrast the hell out of it. I think the f- cuts the first court. picture I put on Instagram was a nude, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Just to see if that, yeah. I can't remember what's the pictures. I think there's some really, like, naff pictures. And so some of the cuts I put up initially, my God, that if I put them up now, the, the way that the... The, the world has moved and yeah. like, everyone's just... You filter just... your own work now though, on it? You're only yeah. as good as your last haircut. Yeah. So if you put some absolutely show-stopping haircut on and the next one's a bad chippy face. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, I look like, I remember doing the first hard parts, but like, yeah. you know, we didn't used to leave them square. No, yeah, I, yeah. I would literally, I did it to my kids. I've got like, you can see like George, he's, he's got this line in his hair and I've literally just taken it up like a one there and then done this massive razor part in it yeah, and yeah. then quiffed this bit up and I was like, oh, it's banging. Look at it now. You just yeah. see it done by a fool. I mean, what a lot, of pe- a lot of people are clever on social media these days where they did, every year they delete all the pictures and they start their full Instagram page from scratch yeah I saw that like um, a band profile they're just launching an album they've literally gone through and, and deleted Did, everything yeah yeah, yeah. I, know a few, I know barbers that do it because they, they're constantly progressing they don't want to see their old work being shown I mean I suppose I bet they saved a lot of it on a hard drive so they don't lose it but they yeah. just constantly refresh it I suppose it's because people's attention span used to be that they'd scroll through maybe but yeah. now nowadays it's everything so smashed well smash some people have like 3,000 pictures and you're not going to go back 3,000 oh, I know but it's funny when you get those one of those bots liking your pictures I'll look at my, my oh yeah Kira, my Kira and the barber likes mine all the time <laughs> <laughs> 2008 well I saw some of these we're still in the womb <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and I get all these likes and these bits, I'm like, I can't even remember taking that picture. Yeah. It was like three years ago, and it's obviously spammed a hashtag yeah. that I Hey, posted. I love this pic. This is really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Who <laughs> yeah, the fuck are you? But those bots, like, much as they, you know, it's a bit of a taboo subject. You know, there's, there's, I know there's guys out there that use them. Yeah. And, you know, I've used them. Yeah. And, you know, they're... It, no one ever mentions the. No, fact. they don't. It's no a proper. It's, it's like, it's like oh, anal. No one it, mentions it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no one likes to talk about it because it no. might. But the thing is, is those bots work. Mm. You know, maybe not so much now because they're awash with loads of other. You know, you, you're going to get something that's good. There's something that's bad. You get a good restaurant. You get a shit restaurant. You get a good bar. You get a shit bar. You're going to get a bot that works properly. It's just, it's, do you know what it is? It's just play, it was playing the uh, very early Instagram system. It, it was just playing yeah, it, and, and it, 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 that's what helped build the momentum up. Well, and got, every you, single barber would be lying if he said that they didn't do it. Even yeah. the huge name one years and years ago, they, they, they all know, did they, it. Yeah, and followers it, jumped from twenty four thousand to eighteen two week. Yeah. <laughs> Off. Yeah, and it was because uh, the algorithm then, which obviously Instagram have changed, and yeah. everyone fucking goes mad when they change the an Instagram. You think, well, it's a free platform, and they they designed this platform not for barbers. They yeah. designed it for normal people. Yeah, of course. Uh, and the fact that we get annoyed with it, 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 shut the fuck up. Like it's just. Well, didn't they change? They changed the setup of it all recently, and everyone went nuts, and they yeah, changed but- it back the day after. Well, I think that's stupid. Well, because they, they changed Facebook because they wanted it to go back so it could be user friendly. That grannies would post pictures of their food, but that's but that's what that's what Facebook. It was a social yeah, get platform, of course. It of wasn't course. meant for like that's. They're trying to penalise businesses because they. I, and it, do so you they still now use hide. Facebook or not? I find Facebook the last few months has been the best way of contacting. Is it? it depends how you look at your business. You can either be B two B, yeah, which is like the educators out there. Um, you know, they're, they're my, I've, I've sat in, in rooms with, with people and I've been showing them like a seminar or whatever, and all of them want, you know, they talk about certain name brands out there that do all the certain sectioning and the bits and pieces, and they want that. And because they, they think that will then bring them customers. Of course. And I'm like, no, you're their customer. Yeah. The reason you want to cut hair like that is because they're playing to you. Consumer don't want that no you can open a shop and you won't be shown a picture of of that mm-hmm. you're their customer do, yep. do you see what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah and that's how you know that that kind of thing is, is coming about but it's uh you know social media is it's just gone you know just so huge now and i think it's such a wash with just nothing i think there's just so many cuts and stuff out there that it just i think a lot of it's moving away from uh old school images with a camera a lot of it's moving into videography video is um, where it's at yeah 100% but, you know it's um, c- because of the farce of photoshop and being able to manipulate a picture with ring lights talc photoshop 
Oh, no, I know. So people don't buy it anymore. It's been outed. So people yeah. want to see a video. But I'd, I'd like to ask, you know these, these guys that do these videos online, the, 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 the clickbait videos, mm. you know, that they, they'll, show a, a pic, they'll show a pair of clippers almost shaving off a massive mop of hair and then they'll go and go like this and then they start cutting their hair. Like fair enough, they, they, get, they might get from clickbait 100,000, 200,000 views. Yeah. But I don't know what that actually brings them. Like me and you have taken a little bit of a back step. Like my, I've taken a, a step back from my own Instagram, I've got my own personal Instagram yeah, now yeah, where yeah. I post because I like my music and do whatever. And the Luke's Barbershop uh, thing, I go for like business to consumer, B2C. I want my customers to see that. I want to, uh, you know, I hashtag local areas so they people can check through those hashtags and then they mm -hmm. can, they might draw people to my shop and put people on my barber's chairs. Yeah. I think, am I doing it to try and play to a bigger crowd now? I don't, I don't know what that, where the value is because there's so much. And yeah, it's, 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 it's intense. It is very intense. And for, for people leaving colleges, barbering, getting into it, you can't even get a look in, you know. It's, you just get totally, totally overlooked. And someone could be absolutely phenomenal for their age. I've got a lad who works with me called Finn, uh, really young, uh, unbelievable barber. But it's, you know, from his circle of friends and customers, within the barbering industry you just get overlooked because people just instantly go to the ones that have got 80 90 thousand followers and they want to see what they're doing yeah yeah well, it's it true it's, it is difficult that's why i pulled away i've not really posted for 12 months on no. instagram i pulled away from it and just started posting stories of me dicking about and just being a balloon and that drew more attention that, in for me than did it did but you know, that online persona that you give yourself, you're obviously not, not that person. No, I'm a hell. I'm a really quiet, I'm Jewish. <laughs> and i um, really quiet, I go to the synagogue twice a day. <laughs> and uh, I'm nothing, absolutely nothing like that. I've never touched ketamine in my life. <laughs> obviously I know yeah, obviously. that. I can, I can vouch <laughs> yeah. for that. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it is, it's all a persona. And if people it think is. that I am that dickhead that they see on, my Instagram stories. Then you do more for them. Yeah, more for them, exactly. But it's just that I find it because a lot of people, I get messages, have you seen Danny's story? Like, you, you know, you're in Kiev in yeah. some room and you've barricaded yourself in. In the room because and I don't want to be like, murdered by I was like, men. he's just bored. Yeah. He's just bored in a fucking hotel room. Because being an educator on the road yeah. in Europe it's is fucking, fucking boring. boring. I've already thrown three wanks out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's only so much. I don't know what cocaine is in Ukraine. Is, so. <laughs> I'm fucked. <laughs> it's just, it, it is really lonely. Yeah, like it, it, it is. is. And you know, after like my course I now run that is five days and uh, bless it, I love it. Yeah. And they really try, they really try and converse with you. But by the end of five days where people don't really speak the same lingo as you, you, you literally, you, you're barely using any vocabulary. Yeah, of course. You barely speak. Then when actually someone tries to talk to you, you've got like, it's like in your job, you know, if you get four, a run of four or five or six customers that don't speak to you, mm. and then that seventh customer goes, hi mate, you're just like, don't fucking oh, talk to me. Fell off. <laughs> you just Stop can't, looking at I've me, got, I've been around in the chair. Yeah, I've just lost yeah. all will to live. I can't speak to you, I just want to stay quiet. I usually quiet. cut the top of his ear with an scissors when you try <laughs> yeah, talking to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just take the top out. Yeah, yeah, yeah mate. Here you go, enjoy that one. But I, yeah, I find that. But it, it, your um, your antics there, and I, you know, I, I find I find it funny. But I know you, so, I'm so a bit what? Like, what some people don't understand is like when I'm flying somewhere, like if I'm going to a B3, if I'm going to the Ukraine, Serbia, um, I'll get the notes out on my phone and I'll pre-script stuff that I want do, to yeah. happen over there. I'll think of something that's funny, and then I, I, yeah. like like I made a I made someone out of bedding. Yeah, no, and, yeah. Uh, you know, I had a drinking partner because I knew I'd be fucking bored. Yeah. You know, and then luckily I found a Ukrainian girl over there who could speak English. <laughs> and she looked after me the whole time. But mate, there was one where I went back to a Russian house party and none of, nobody spoke English. I was oh, sat with Crocs on five in the morning <laughs> in the, you know, a, a Ukrainian fucking council estate. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone was like, "You've got a deaf wish." It's like something out of a hostel, but I just think. Yeah, but it's not actually. But that's only because they realise the media here. When you go to these countries, it's no, not it's, it's men. I love it. Yeah, it's not half as bad. No, is it's, it? it's not I've at all. I've only ever been shot twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my dad, every time I say to him we're going to Russia, he's always like, oh, "Be careful, Luke." I'm just like, mate. 
you know, you're the, he's one of the most well-travelled men I know. Yeah. I mean, like, you should, you used to spend lots of time in Saudi and going here. You've we watched online beheadings, like, on, on, on TV. Like, mm. you know, you worry about me going to Russia. And he's like, oh, this, you know, trouble. I'm like, mate, it's, no, trust it's me, it's, Russia's a lot safer than walking through Manchester during the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, sidewinded yeah, off an 11-year-old in you, shoes, Nick. You took me to shore, oh, wow. I remember. Yeah. And we, we're walking up the road and there's that, like, no, drove. Yeah. And there was someone that, like, just... The comatose yeah, outside yeah, a pub. Yeah, yeah. No, but someone, no, someone smashed a chair over his head. And someone, but everyone's still standing around drinking around him. Everyone's just like, It's like, where the fuck have you brought me? Yeah, I've never seen that in That's Moscow. just the norm. Yeah, madness. So you script all that. I know, I knew, like, yeah, a lot I of see it, it and it is hysterical. A lot of it's scripted. Um, like, you know, Barrett, the, the first time I went to the Ukraine, mate, I was genuinely petrified and I had a drink with a guy at the bar who looked like some out of Grand Theft Auto. So I genuinely barricaded myself in the room. Because I thought it was going to ask me. <laughs> me. So, so, so that bit was real. And yeah. then I woke up in the morning when I'd sobered up thinking, why the fuck is the bed behind the door? Uh, Mate, one of the best ones is when we went to Salon International and uh, <laughs> a girl was being groomed in the room next door. Right? So we, we, we saved the day, me and Killian, right? And booted the door off and rang the police, yeah? No. And all the police came, they arrested this guy, this girl was really young. They took him away. So this guy was a bit flashy, like some young gangster type lad. So I said to Killian, like, like, let's break into the room and we'll nick all the shit. Maybe it's like left a Rolex or a really nice coat. So the door's shut. I fucking karate kick it off its hinges. The p- fucking police are in there, only just in doubt. <laughs> With full fucking CSI outfits on. They went, hello, can I help you? I was like, oh, sorry, wrong room. Fuck it was sake. like, fuck off. Oh. Mate, it was the worst. But, mate, I can turn any mundane, boring situation into, like, literally... But that was your, going back to the beginning, like, you, you were in Shameless. Yeah, I was an actor. How did that happen? Um, were you doing were you an acting were you yeah yeah I was put in acting from 11 when my mum found out I had a, a, a ADHD <laughs> <laughs> she was like how the fuck can I control him I'm sick of him fucking pretending he's John Rambo <laughs> crawling around the living room with a kitchen knife <laughs> fuck so, so yeah, she, yeah, yeah so well. she put me in acting um, and yeah I was on TV at 11 12 not uh, in Shameless though no I was in something called Walk and Well um, years ago and then it just progressed when I left school I wanted to be this big shot actor and my mum and dad was always like get a real job you know stop with this acting bullshit and then I went to acting school in Manchester uh, I got a very very good agent and it snowballed very quickly I did loads and loads of TV stuff I earned some pretty good money to be fair but uh, it's a very fickle industry yeah. and one minute you can be the flavour of the month uh, absolutely everywhere and then someone who's a bit more younger better looking better attitude comes in because the more jobs you get you get a bit cocky with it and you think oh, like fucking auditions mine already before I've even gone in yeah. I think I turned up semi pissed once to a massive party in Coronation <laughs> Street with <laughs> fucking chisel all up the side <laughs> of my face I walked in and just like next oh really so yeah you know it's you've just got to be, remain grounded and you- I know someone who I went to acting school with and they chipped away at it and away at it and away at it for years and it was only 10 years down the line they got a part well, on Nation Street yeah. and they, she worked in a bar and then she smashed it you know what I mean she's on Corrie she's still on it now um, I went to acting school with Michelle Keegan we were both in the same class it was mad oh, wow. yeah and look at how big she is it's just if you how much you want it and uh, obviously with me I think I was meant to go into barbering I had no business idea running a shop you know money skills man management so but it just all came naturally so it was the same this was the last thing you did no the last thing i did was a program with uh lenny james who is in lock stock and two smoking barrels and the walking dead oh yes the black guy yeah 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 um, and it was uh, like a prison document well prison style documentary type um i just got typecast thugs rapists drug dealers <laughs> arsonist <laughs> no surprise there, yeah, yeah it just got boring after a while um, so how old were you then uh, 18 to 24 you did that till you were 24 yeah, that was, was that get, your full time job then uh, well I got into barbering when I was 21 ok so you are just doing it kind of well, you were hairdressers first weren't you a hairdressing went into hairdressing absolutely ruined many people's lives I believe one woman hung herself I fucked her up <laughs> <laughs> 
If Jasper had graduated, Bobby could fucking ski slope <laughs> down the back of it. I think we've all done that. Mate, mate it was the fucking worst. I'm sure uh, I did it with clippers. Uh, yeah. Oh, I just don't. It's oh, mate, I cut my mum's hair once and she was trying to be really nice. Like to yeah. say, oh, it's bloody beautiful. It was fucking awful. <laughs> it was awful. It yeah. was awful. Uh, only your mum would like it. Yeah, I gave, it, I gave her some highlights in the old bled. No, oh, I've Like tiger stripes through the top. Oh, wow. Oh. I'm sure she'd give herself a skinner just to go on in Weaver. Oh, we did we did cap highlights on some woman once, and she used to come in all the time. My hair was fucked, yeah. and it was just a matter of time. And it just happened to be on my watch that it go tits up. And like this is at the time, but I don't think you can even get sixty vol now. But she wanted sixty fold cap highlights. We stuck it on her, and she wanted to sit under a dryer. And we're oh, like, wow. I was like, I'm begging, yeah. don't please don't do it to me, don't do it to me. Neither to say, she sat under a dryer. Next thing you know, I went to wash it off, and it literally, as I took the cap off, her hair came with it. <laughs> <laughs> just like Holy and, then, fuck. and then I had to break it to her and then it, it was like I broke her heart yeah. I was like I, I just Excuse I me. told you your hair's terminal <laughs> your hair is fucked <laughs> there's nothing else I can say it's the number one all over <laughs> so, yeah. it might even do you a favour yeah, I just would have gone home halfway through nah. <laughs> so that was that was till 20, 21 to 24 and then you started working in what Manchester yeah so what happened is one of the barbers phoned in sick one day and I got pushed into doing the men's hair they said oh Danny you're pretty confident to take over this guy's column and just it just led from there um, I went from working as a hairdresser into being pushed into barbering then I went working for a company called the Gentry Grooming which was based in Manchester they're still there yeah and they, my boss at the time was on The Apprentice and I'm quite clever with my marketing again it, with all the stories and Instagram and yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I learned a lot of it off her she was a very clever person uh, again, oh, really? yeah, the multi-millionaires, the, the marketing was genius. Um, and it's where you learn on the job. Do you know what I mean? With your female, you might fuck a few people's hair up. But it's not your own shop. You, you know, you, you just, you're working for someone else. Yeah. I think you need to do that. And then I went to go and work self-employed in literally a backstreet barber shop, uh, doing five, six pound haircuts. And that's where I, I literally learned my trade. So do you teach yourself? Did someone take you to one side no, and when, teach you stuff? Uh, well, my wife at the time, Samantha, taught me a lot to do with scissors uh, and clippers, completely self-taught. All of really? It, all of it self-taught, yeah. What did you start off with? Um, but we, didn't have, we didn't have a lot of, like, choice, do we? No. Well, the thing is, the reason, one of the reasons I became a barber is because I kept going to the barber shop and I kept getting my hair messed up. Yeah. So <laughs> I just asked for a pair of clippers from Argos one year and started doing my own. And it was better than what was happening at the barber shop. So then it led to that. And then I started cutting a few friends' hair. I started giving my nana fade. <laughs> <laughs> Hard part fade. Hard part, it, yeah, yeah, it's all about the scumbag. Boogie just, yeah, it just led from there, yeah, to be fair. Yeah. And then my little brother was like about 18 months at the time. I gave him a few bad fucking fades. Yeah, standard. Um, and it just progressed. I worked in this, this, this shop for a few years. And my boss was an absolute arsehole. Um, and it just made me want to do it for myself. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go all out. And I did a few secret training courses behind the scenes before I opened my own shop. I opened it with £2,000. Um, and it was just basic. And then just... But you reworked it a few times because it's obviously... it's Because you actually give a shit of what it actually looks like because you know the, the benefits of having a shop that actually matches the right so what it was is it was really basic it was just plastered really basic chairs just ba ikea it was an ikea yeah, well, barbershop ikea eBay barbershop was, yeah. and then i come working with you in shoreditch and walked into a bookshop that was the coolest fucking bookshop i've ever seen and it was all brick mm. and neon and wood and i just pulled my phone out and started taking pictures right. and the the brick lane shoreditch me visiting that for Crep City and coming meeting you massively influenced me to then change it up. A bit. Change it up. And there's a barber shop in central London called something like Pin Ups and Dolls or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was again that's where I saw the neon. And I was like, that yeah. looks fucking so cool on varnished brick. I was yeah. like that. So, and there was nothing up north like that. So did, did you do most of that design yourself? All no. of it. So a massive, massive drug deal paid off, <laughs> and I was quitting. <laughs> but that uh, shows, is that something that you might deviate into if I've, you actually I've, got I've, an I've, eye I've for asked it? loads of people have asked me many times to help. 
design stuff. Design shops, but then it's a watered down saturated version of, of what you want to do so. And I've had barbers come and sit in my shop, pretend they want a haircut or even have a haircut and steal all the ideas. Yeah, well, you, you can, it but happens, but it's cool. It's, I look at it as it's, well, it's, it's nice. A form, it's a form of flattery. Yeah, so of course. Like imitation is a, is a form of flattery. Of course. Um, but yeah, do you know what? My mum's unbelievably creative. Um, right. And it's just something that came natural. Uh, I knew what I wanted when I come to kit, kit the shops out. The second shop, the Gotham theme, I just knew straight away. I knew what I wanted. Um, I had a fantastic interior designer who helped me, Craig. And what I told him, he just, just literally it. drew it on like Illustrator, came back and I was just like, fucking mate, what I've said is, and it's the same with my graphic designer, Luke. I've got a, a really good graphic designer. My Danny and Co, um, like italic logo. Yeah. I knew what I wanted in my head and I explained it to him and he come back to me and I was like, mate, that's just it's surreal fun. how, yeah. you, how you've got it like that. Cause I mean, the branding is what makes it pop. You know, yeah, I had yeah, the yeah. Illuminati eye, which I've got tattooed on me mm. with the cutthroats around it. Many people rip that off to death to this day. They still, yeah, they still it. do it. Yeah, I see that all the time. And that, you know, I had that five years ago. So it's just originality. So you've got two shops now. One is your kind of Shoreditchy, uh, you know, like neon and, and whatever. And then you've got the Gotham. Yeah. So are you, would you, if you've got a third shop, for instance, would you have another thing altogether? Or would you ever try and merge them that, both? Merge all three together? Probably, yeah. Uh, I mean, I want to go down the route of opening an academy. Okay. And I've, I've already got how I want it to look. Okay. Uh, I'm just going for a complete Stone Island theme because that's what most people know me by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm going to have neon pictures on the wall mm -hmm. with Stone Island uh, garments hung in picture frames. Oh, wicked. So with complete glass, so it's all see-through glass mm -hmm. um, in, a, in like a acrylic box and at the top the neon will shine down all different colours. Awesome. So there'll be like three, four jackets and a huge neon Stone Island sign. Just again, that's something that's my USP, people Everyone know. knows you for it. Yeah, well, exactly. Everyone takes piss out of you for it, but yeah, it's, it's exactly. not like everyone, it's, it's what you... It was just something that I latched onto very early. Um, you know, a, a lot of my friends used to wear it. It's a, it's a massive, you know, it's huge, it's huge at the minute. Um, so yeah, I just I, I just wore completely, absolutely killed Stone Island to death. Everything I had at one point was Stone, <laughs> Stone Island. Island yeah. yeah, until Josh, who used to work for me, stole it all. <laughs> <laughs> God bless him. God bless him. But um, um, go on. your academy. Yeah. So then, so what, how many people are you going to have? Are you going to have quite a big academy? For um, I'm going to start off with probably six chairs, um, and take it from there. I always I'm a huge believer in just start off small. Mm. Don't run before you can walk um, and just see where it goes. You can always expand. Well, the, you can always get another shop. Yeah, the difficult with the whole thing with the academy is that you know there's there's obviously changes afoot with the with the industry as such because you've got some schools out there that are kicking out two week courses, three week courses, nine week courses. Yeah, and it's literally. I'm going to do a twenty four hour course. <laughs> yeah, completely qualified twenty four hours. That's the. That's it, banging. Yeah, sponsored oh. by Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Gives you wins. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I think it's, uh, you know, I think if it, there's a market now for it to be done properly. I only know, hand on heart, in my own personal opinion, there's only like a few schools out there that actually do it for the right reasons. Yeah, of course. There's some uh, that are just There's one in Newcastle. Um, SB. Yeah, SB is amazing. You know, and she, I've met Vicky, she's absolutely lovely. I know, she's so passionate for exactly. it. Exactly, that's what ev you need. And every, like, trainee that, that goes through their doors I know that she will care for yeah, that person exactly. until the end and if they're not, not ready to finish then she will keep them back and exactly, she'll hold them on exactly as well some of it's just about the profit in out in out in out as much money as they can well you know the changes of fit because I've I don't know I've sort of been part of the hair council now and I've mm. kind of I've gone down that corporate membership become registered and um, you know hopefully going to try and push the industry forward and get the... That's, that's amazing. The, I don't think they'd ever let me on that because of my past criminal convictions. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but um, we're trying to get the industry uh, changed. So we're, yeah. um, we, I think we're at 28 MPs now. We need to get to 52. Right, that's um, we've got all loads of impact statements. There's loads of stuff going on behind closed, uh, closed, behind closed doors uh, and it'd be awesome. And the academies that aren't doing it properly, 
will will get caught up in that if it gets regulated because at the moment there's no because we're not unified there's no voice to say don't do it that way of course of course and but it's just it's mis-selling can... people like you know going to try and get people to go to a bank to, of mum and dad because they're going to come out and be promised stockbroker money that just doesn't happen we well, all know you, you can do academy courses with people and you just get a, a certificate which isn't worth yeah, the for, for attendance yeah but course. they only find that when they go to a shop thinking that it, they're going to get a job and they turn up and they, they won't even get an interview yeah of course which is completely wrong. I, I agree, but then again, it's like if you need liability insurance, you ask you to send your certificates in. And if you, you should do, 100%. Yeah, of course. Mate, there's a huge void of barbers in the UK who probably even have fucking insurance. Well. Which is crazy. Which is know, it. But the thing is, you can't, like, everyone says, well, these, these guys should be closed down on bits and pieces. But the thing is, is that as long as you, if you're legal, mm. you know, there is, there is restaurants that are shit and there's restaurants that are good. Yeah. And they, but they're all completely legal. You're allowed to be shit. Mm. But just like, you're supposed to be on a level playing field. These people just open up uh, and just cut hair for next to no money. And, it, you know, and they've got people working for whatever they're being, they can't be earning any money for themselves. Yeah. Uh, and that's just wrong. Because that's then, you know, because of people's perception of what we do, then depends on how much we are supposed to charge. So it doesn't matter even if like, you know, you try and go to Gordon Ramsay and say, well, the only reason that you, you know, you're gonna have to charge 15 pounds a meal because everyone else along your street charges 15 pounds. Yeah, He'd tell you to get fucked. Yeah. And he just wouldn't do it. But it's because they have ratings, five star, all the rest of it. And yeah. he's Michelin starred. He's got all this stuff to prove that that's why he's 200 pound a head. I'm we're not saying we get to that point. I get, I get, yeah, I get that. It's like the area that we're from in Oldham, obviously the, the, you've got Ruger there and then you know we're there as well, but a lot of the barber shops in Oldham are five, six, seven, eight quid. So then you do get people coming in saying, well, what, how come you're 22 quid in, in the upper mill shop? And it's like the guy stood cutting out in front of you as a UK barber of the year. You know, yeah. Yeah, that's the reason why we can charge that. Yeah. But even then, but still 20 quid, 22 quid's nothing. I know it's nothing, but to someone who eats know, Pound Bakery with <laughs> with a <laughs> Air Max on and <laughs> Timberland on the other shoe. Yeah, <laughs> okay. well, he's only got one shoe. Yeah. But I, I, I get that, but it, it, something's got to give at one point. I admit it's, it is, look at hairdressing. You, you can go into Supercuts for a men's haircut and it's 25 quid and you're going to come out like you've been raped by a rake. <laughs> And it just looks awful. Yeah. But people just will pay it because there's it, a mar- there is a market for that. I'm not saying this, but everyone wants the the Michelin star. I yeah, know that. Course, I get that. But the, we've got to be able to differentiate between that. And at yeah. the moment, we're just if you put one barber next to another barber, you're all just a sweeping statement. No, no, it doesn't matter if you're award winning. You're just seen as you're all on an equal playing field. Yeah. Which I suppose in one way is is good, but it's not another because some people actually really care. Some people are just yeah. doing it, I'm just going to smash this out, I don't care what you look like, I'm only in it for the money. And yeah. there's people that actually, I really care what you look like and what's, how you're going to go, how you're going to be perceived when you go outside. I know that you've been talking to me about uh, how you feel about yourself and hopefully I've made you feel better. There's all of those kind of things that we try and encapsulate in what we do. Of course. But we're not, that's never seen. And it's only because of those perceptions of like your mate down the pub that says, oh, you should go to my barber, he's sick, he charges a fiver. That yeah. just doesn't like and that whole like mentality. He's been hit in the head with an axe. Basically, yeah. he's always the one with the deadest trim. Of he course. was like, "Oh, fucking do me, yeah. do me a favour." So you full got of the, chisel, full of chisel. <laughs> yeah, comes right out of the yeah. <laughs> Hey, you should go to my barber. Yeah, yeah, sick, yeah. oh yeah, but yeah. he is. So academy's next. Yeah. So that's going to be open in spring. Yeah, looking to uh, aim for spring. Uh, I keep throwing it about on social media. I mean, I've had sixty plus inquiries already. Which, you know, to me, it's like, it brings it, it you know, it makes me feel happy. I, I'd be humble with stuff like that, you know, that 60 people are inquiring to learn to cut hair. But I think it's because I'm, I, I'm from a proper working class background, I, you know, from a single parent family. Um, my mum had me at like 15, 16, you know, council brought up. And I've done all this off my own back. My mum in a million years never pushed me into opening my own shop. She was scared. I had a young baby at the time. She wanted me to continue working for this guy who I work for. I was just like, no, fuck it. I want to, I know it's going to work. It's like that book that I always brag on about, you know, the secret. If you know in the back of your mind, you know, the law of, shut the fuck up. (laughs) Uh, The road men. The road men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, (laughs) But yeah, it's one of them, the law of attraction, you know, your mind is a very powerful thing. If you go into something knowing it's going to work, 
it's going to work. Yeah, if yeah. you go into shagging a bird knowing that you're going to have a flopper, <laughs> it's not going to work, mate. You're going to try and slam it in the door. <laughs> it's just, it's just it's mind over matter, mind all of it. Matter. It is, it is. The positivity always works. Of course. I was, I was in another, I was in a meeting during the week and they were talking about like positivity and bits and pieces. And I used to be that ultra negative person. I was that guy. Do you remember Harry yeah. Enfield's character? Yeah. Yeah, you old git. Yeah. I was that guy. Yeah. And you can ask all the people who used to work with me when I was a state agent and I worked in customer services. I walked into a room, people would fuck off. <laughs> it was serious, honestly. And, I, and I, I'd walk and they'd literally, no one would talk to me. Yeah, Cause I was yeah. just like, oh, so shit. Life's yeah. just bollocks. Yeah. It and then good. I got sent, we, it was, suddenly became, like it went from quantity to quality about, yeah, we were working yeah. customer services at the time. So uh, they sent me on this, this American training, the American lady called Mary Gober, do this yeah. customer services training. And it was three days. And uh, I just thought to myself, this is dog shit. It's just, just, I just know. And I was that naughty school kid. I sat yeah. at the back, roll on the back of my chair, like, fuck this. Balls hanging out, is it? What a load of shit. <laughs> And I sat there and then like day two, halfway through, I'm literally, and, and, and it hadn't been great thus far. So yeah. I was winning. I was yeah. managing to pull people into my little virus cell yeah, at the yeah. back going, this is all shit. Yeah. And then this woman came out and, and that day, Mary Gober couldn't actually turn up to that show. So, it was, so I was like, ah, oh, she's going to fucking turn up. Look, she knows it's is shit. Is that the one who bakes cake? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then a lackey got up, this, yeah. this, this girl, and she said, well, we're going to talk about positivity and negativity. Like, oh. yeah. And then she wrote down like a list, right? Of this long, on, like just writing on a whiteboard thing or a piece of paper, this list of negative, like, negative traits. Mm. And as she wrote all of them, I was exactly every single one on that piece of paper in the back of my mind going, oh, fucking hell, that's me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I was like, I'm not going to admit that. Yeah, yeah. And then they went on for the rest of the day and I thought, like, it, just, it just struck a chord. It's like, fucking hell, they've just literally nailed me on a piece of paper up there and they don't even know me. So they, and they told this story about, you, if you, you know, your, uh, people around you might have had a good day, but yeah. because of you just being like this, you just want to blurt out all your negativity, you can completely ruin someone's great day yeah, by I, being a complete but dick. Do you not think that we get that as barbers when someone sits on your chair and they just spiel off a load of shit? And yeah. Literally like, oh. but, but a lot of people don't have that, I don't know, that mental, but sometimes they just need to do yeah, that. Yeah, of course. But, you know, I saw this thing, and sometimes it's the power, power of vocabulary. Of course, you get that. See, you got you got to flip it. You got to look at it. You know, lucky to be alive. You know, some people sat in hospital beds who have been given the most dreadful news, and yeah. you know, you've got to look at everything as a blessing. You know, yeah. when you wake up in the morning, I've still got a nine inch and I'm still good. <laughs> <laughs> He's lying, by the way. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> it's ten. It's ten. It's ten. <laughs> but um, yeah. But yeah, that, that, from that moment, I, I got home and I had a shit journey home and yeah. I, I, I used that line. I said, do you know what? I'm just happy to be home. And my life changed from that moment. And I, 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 might, I know that seems like really cliche, but it did. Cause I was just like, well, maybe I, I'm, I bring all this, this shit and negativity and stuff on well, myself. That, yeah, that's what they say that, you know, the, the book, the book, the secret and the magic says you attract what you're constantly thinking of. So if you're constantly thinking, I don't want any bills, I've got no money and you're just in a vicious cycle, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, that's all you're going to attract. Yeah, 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 it's so true. So if you surround yourself with prostitutes and champagne and fucking, it's just, you just all get gonna, more of that. It's all going to get it more just of that. It just gets even better. Yeah, yeah, they just line themselves up yeah, in the door. Yeah, of course, now. mate. That's the way forward. But, you know, it, it, it helped me a lot. Um, I stumbled across that book by accident. I was in an acting class and someone left it behind and I picked it up to give it her back the week after mm. and just flicked through it on the train on the way home and like, wow, what the fuck is this? It was like fate. I would never have come across that book. And I read it and then I thought, I'm not very good at reading. It took me three years to read it, <laughs> a page a week. Uh, yeah. But then they released um, a video, a YouTube video. Yeah, there's the, a film and, and there's a film about it, which was so much easier to, you know, digest in. And it, it just, it did just work for me. But don't get me wrong, I still have periods where you can go the opposite way where things aren't going great and yeah. you start dwelling on things and then the next thing your wife's left you <laughs> and you're living in a grip bin. Right. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but no, I, yeah, bad things happen Yeah, sometimes. of course. And you it, just got a, I, it's I life, think, isn't it? Yeah, and it's sometimes, all right, wallow in self-pity, that's fine and dandy, but every now and then, you know, you have to shake yourself out every yeah. time. Because the only person that can get you out of that is you, right? Of course. You know, you can go begging around to everybody else going, oh, I'm going shit time in a minute, but they, they can't help you, much yeah, as they it's, try to. It's like, it's like what, going back to social media, when you see someone on Facebook with someone erring the dirty laundry, and you just think, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't care that Nigel. Yeah. Fucking, you know what I mean? Yeah. Throwing soup at you again. You're like, 
I know. And you, you do see it. It's, so it's always it the same people. Yeah, it just happens in real life. People do just like, oh, I've got my own troubles. I don't need to listen to yours. So if you had to give some, I don't know, five key points about, I don't know, moving on. Say if you're a, a fledgling barber and mm. you're thinking of like, you've managed to get a shop, you're quite happy where you are. What's five key things to keep in mind over the next couple of years to get where uh, obviously move with the times I do genuinely think that um, a sit and wait barbershop to it I don't know I personally think a thing of the past I think um, I think a, a, appointments is um, is the future it, it helps me my turnovers improved um, it's it's more professional people aren't sat there tapping the watch and the thing that people don't realise is that going to appointments, it means that you can actually just get rid of your waiting area and put a barber station well, there. Well, of course it can make the it shop. It makes extra. you more lucrative. Of course it does, because there's not a lot of people sat waiting because there's constantly people yeah, in and out of the chair. You don't need a waiting area. Um, another thing is, um, you know, use social media to the best of your advantage, whether you love or hate it. You know, I've fell out with it at the minute, but I still use it. Mm. Um, it is still worthwhile. It is still, but, it is still worthwhile. But like you said, it's to plan like look you can do a sick haircut and think i'll post that up yeah but sometimes if you're going to be clever with it you have to go away plan it strategize it and carry it through of a lot of people in this industry have got loads of ideas but never push them through of well a lot of these absolutely phenomenally good haircuts that you see on instagram they've invited them back on a sunday they've cut their hair for free <laughs> they spent three hours on it They've made it look the best they can possibly do. Yeah. They've got a ring light in front of it. That's what makes, there's so much thought gone into that haircut. It's not just, oh, I've just cut Nigel's hair, let me just take a quick picture of it. Mm. It's got past that stage now where there's, it's a lot of structure behind that absolutely mm. phenomenal haircut. Yeah, a lot of those haircuts, see, they are, they've been designed to be like that at that particular time. But it looks like image. you've just cut the, do you get what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's just clever, it's smoke and mirrors a lot of it. And it it's smoke and mirrors but it's time and it is effort yeah you course. don't just you don't just magically like ryan cullen's picture that went viral and went all over the place i'm sure he just didn't do whack that out one day and go no, he's perfected you know, that over time that was you know his yeah. favorite head of hair probably yeah you know and he's put that kind of line in it might have been too low to begin with maybe too high the way after you know the one with the line yeah through. yeah and eventually he finally got that strike and then we stuck it in black and white made it a bit more grainy and next thing you know you've got yeah, the most everywhere. powerful image yeah. You know, it's still used. I think even Zara nicked it and didn't pay him for it. Like, you yeah, know, there's it is, so it's... much. So you have to put, if you're going to do it and you want to put something out there, it doesn't just happen like that. Of course, of course. Um, so that's point one, point two. Yeah, so point two is uh, don't chase the imaginary pot of gold because trust me, I've been there. It doesn't exist. It, doesn't exist. it really doesn't exist. I've worked for some of the biggest, biggest companies in the industry. I've been on the highest stage you can possibly get on with the fellowship hair of excellence mm -hmm. stood next to people who are just royalty um and i'm just very very lucky to be you know the clipper company that i do work for yes i get paid for them i get paid per post i get paid when i a day rate when i work away um that is just something that i've just been very very lucky um to, to be involved in um well, so that's with Oster, isn't it? Or yeah, Oster, I say, yeah or with Oster. Oster. Oster and so how did, just interestingly, how did you start off with them? Um, I, at the time, I'd won two business awards back to back. Uh, I'd been at the height of my career in the feds with Josh LaMonica and mm -hmm. Simon Kibler and, you know, Tarek. And I was at a really good point in my career. Uh, I had a pair of Oster 97s and um, I had an issue with one of the screws. I didn't know at the time how to fix them. I just thought, oh, fuck this, they cost a lot of money. So I sent them back, didn't hear anything. So I sent an email and this absolutely lovely woman replied back with the, the, some Irish woman with a really nice email. I thought, wow, how nice, how welcome. That's fantastic customer service. I emailed her back. I said, look, I believe you don't have anyone in the UK that's representing the Ulster brand. Obviously with other well-known clipper companies, he had a face behind it. Uh, uh, Ulster was associated with American Crew, which was American, a lot of it. So I just, I just sent her a load of pictures of my work. Said I'm on this artistic team, we do the stuff with fellowship and all these hair shows. And she just said, right, cool, just come and speak to me at Pro Hair Live, which is in my home turf. Took a model, Pro Hair Live, smashed this guy's haircut out, 
which was cool. It was a Mad Max inspired yeah, haircut know. where it was faded at the sides and at the back I didn't fade it and it went into a V. Yeah, yeah. And then I put lines in the back. Stuff like what uh, Robert Bread does. I was doing fucking five years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. So the things I remember those images and I knew that you planned them and they're st they still stick in your mind now. That's how important like strategy. Yeah, so you. they saw that and saw that I did the full haircut using Ulster. Just instantly snapped me up. But what a lot of people don't see is I work for free for them for about three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't get any day rate, I got nothing, I just got free clippers, which is cool, don't get me wrong. I didn't get anything, I had to pay for my own train, my own hotel. Yeah. It might cost me thousands a year. Some people didn't see that, that yeah. I was doing all that for free for my own exposure. Mm. And then one day, last year, they came and offered me a, a, a contract. nice contract, yeah. Yeah, but that was only after you. Mate, I had to put the work in. I had yeah. to prove that I was dedicated because there's another 100 barbers that would have done that. Yeah. Um, and it works, and I like it. I see it as it's a bit, it's a break from the norm. It's outside of work, they send me to cool countries. How do they um, see your social media entity? Do they I've know? Been, yeah, I've been warned a few times. I've been warned when I went to the Ukraine to not mention Chernobyl. Fucks. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and okay. fetuses growing out the side of people's heads. <laughs> Right, yeah, probably best not to leave that alone. So uh, they know what I'm like, but again, it sells. It's uh, you, you. You log on my Instagram stories, and I have um, an analogy of stats, and, and um, it tells me how many views I get. When we was on the anchored cruise, I got fucking six hundred thousand views within a week. It had at the bottom, it's nearly a, it's like over half a million. Yeah. Of, you know, people watching me just balloon and dick about and on a cruise. And that's social influencing. It's of course. At of course. its peak. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's why that when companies want to put stuff out there now, they're going to social influencers because you know their marketing budgets before take away social media, they would have had to go to print and they would have had to pay models, and yeah. you would have had Naomi Campbell or these other things. And there was big budgets for these. For these brands to do that mm. but now they can just go to social media and they're like well hang on a minute they can handpick anyone you know, and uh, half of them will work for free exactly and they just all they see is they go on there they have a look at your account at the top you know, a lot of these have, a lot of these influencers who you see on instagram don't have a pot to piss in yeah i know they really bullshit. don't it's just all i know people who they, they borrow people's cars and put a picture of a porsche day and it's not even theirs yeah you know what i mean they've got a fucking jacket on that's the mates and a flash in a fucking watch that's not even yeah. theirs it, it's it is just a picture but you don't know what's how the pictures come about yeah. i could sit here with 10 rolexes on go they're not mine do you get what i mean it's just yeah. it's 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 a, a picture can create a really strong image mm. and lead you down one path when really it's a total fucking opposite yeah. You're literally just putting out your best life. Exactly. That, that doesn't mean it's it doesn't, the one you're It, it doesn't show me with a black eye after I've been swatted in a pub, does it? <laughs> <laughs> well, <the thing> is, <laughs> didn't you get pulled into your kid's school for having a load of talcum powder on your face, mate? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I got, no, I've, I've, I've been having balloon canisters. <laughs> <laughs> but that was all fake. It was all yeah, fake. Yeah, it's but, just just uh, fucking me being an idiot. But that's but, where people like that. Oh, it's on social media. Yeah. It must be true. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's true. It's me hanging my kid out the window by his feet. <laughs> <laughs> Ten floors up. <laughs> Baby blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Last point. Like, what's one key thing to tell younger barbers or any barber? Like uh, again, just invest in education. You can never ever stop learning ever. Ever, ever, ever. Every day is a school um, day. Exactly. Uh, it's, it, it, it is that, you know, every customer that comes in, just millions of different hair types. No mm. customer is the same. One guy could have straight hair on the sides. It's a bit wavy on top. It's, yeah. you know what I mean? I used to work on my Afro game a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, because then when you're known as being a general all-rounder, you will get Afro guys coming in. You'll get Asian, you'll yeah. get Chinese, you get Korean. And... It's, you've just got to know how to cut every single person's hair. So yeah. education is key. Um, I genuinely believe in that. Um, I'm always watching all the time. Um, yeah. I, I, I think for fledgling barbers, that's the one. It's just to keep yourself current at yeah. all times. If fair enough, you're doing classics, but well, that doesn't mean you shouldn't, like you might stick out, I do psycho billies, fades, and I do this, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Just flat tops. Wonderful, that's great, don't lose that. Yeah. But that's not gonna they'll be around for a long time but there will be trends where it will change and you'll yeah. have to to stay current so you're still earning money and yeah. Go on. i genuinely think that just finding your own unique persona like my persona yeah. is a chubby stone island dickhead basically 
you know what I mean? And Josh LaMonica has his persona, Alan mm. Beak has his persona, Ryan Cullen, all the massive names, Colin from Hard Grind, yourself, champs, they've got something that makes them stand out yeah. individually. Even if it's the smallest thing, mm. that's what they're known for. If you come and copy someone else's blueprint, you're just a watered down version yeah. of them. And I always think, and this is something that I've, I've got like, is in idea geography or business geography, but I call it idea geography, is that you can take someone's idea, but yeah. you don't know the terrain that person's crossed in their idea to get there. No. So they, that person that you're copying has an end goal, which you don't know. Mm. And you don't know what your end goal because you're too busy nabbing that idea. Mine's to get HIV. Well, there you go. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, if you just, it's not, it, okay, if you don't know who you are yet, that's fine. Yeah, you've whatever. got to have an end goal. But, but just think of yourself, okay, you know, I know it seems a long way away, 20 years, 10 years, five years, whatever works for you. That's why I wanted to do this academy, because I can't see myself constantly standing behind a barber chair. Just at Christmas, like, it just fucking nearly killed me. Yeah. And I just want to go down a little bit of a different route. I've, you know what I mean? I've done 12 years of this now. I I'm still just... stick cutting hair, just like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but the rest of the time I, I want to be more, do more of the business side of it. And you know, a lot of people have been messaging me on social media, why are you not posting any more funny videos? Why are you not posting anything? Blah, blah, blah. This is me keeping my head down, planning what I want to do yeah, now yeah, for the yeah. next five to well, seven years. It. When people think, oh, when, uh, oh, he's not posting anything, can't be doing anything. That's the time. When, when you should be most be worried. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, because if someone just suddenly disappears for a while, doesn't tell everyone, oh, I'm disappearing for a while because yeah. it's just like, you don't know what you're doing. He's just someone just- Usually you're in rehab if you fucking <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gone missing I'm for Gone for six weeks. Yeah. But like, it just means that you've gone away and you've gone, right, okay, now it's time to make some changes. Of course. And when you come back, you're gonna come back brighter. So that's, you know, that's what I think. And for business owners, there's one last thing. I think if you're gonna, you know, make all these changes, but you have to think about your consumer, you have to think while you're doing it. Yep and you have to think about how you're going to put extra bums on tears. It, that's, that's the long and short of it. Nope, I can And, it, and you thinking about, oh, I'm going to do this, I stand on this stage and blah, blah, blah. You know, sometimes it's just mis misguided. The end, your end result is to keep your business going and lucrative and moving forward. I agree, I agree. But um, I want to say a massive thank you for inviting me down here. Okay. Um, well, thanks for coming down. Yeah. It's always, man. And that's uh, the first Behind the Barber and I uh, hope you enjoyed that. If you're interested about being us again, drop us some messages and we'll see if we can get you on. Send nudes. Thank you very much.